This is also the time when we spend a few minutes talking about what the priorities are. And what's so important and so interesting is, as many of you know, AZ Bio this year celebrated 20 years of making an impact in Arizona. And that is because of everyone in this room and everybody that came before you and what's coming next will be because of you and everybody that comes after you. And so as we work to improve the lives of people in Arizona and around the world, it's really important that we look at impact. And so um, as we move into the next decade, of AZ Bio's impact, we really have to kind of look back to what we talked about last year, which is it doesn't happen miraculously. There are a set of inputs that create the output that creates the outcome that makes the impact. And the inputs are the jobs and the capital funding and the public policy work. Those are inputs. The outputs are the discoveries, the companies that are in development, and most importantly, the products that are being delivered to make lives better for patients. When you have those things come together, the inputs, the outputs, the outcomes, that's when you get impact. One by itself doesn't solve the problem. Educating students does us no good if we don't have jobs to put those students into. Discovering things at our universities and places like TGen and at our hospitals don't help patients until companies develop them. And we won't create the next generation of entrepreneurs if we don't have capital to allow them to create the milestones that are necessary to become investable companies. And so, you know, as we look forward, it's very, very important that we remember at all times that this is a process. And we have set an incredibly large goal. My hair is gray, getting grayer by the moment, but it's an achievable goal. And so, Many of you see people around the room that are wearing these pins. If you didn't get one on your way in, grab one on your way out um, and wear it all the time. And when people come up to you and say, why are you wearing that pin? You say, we are going to double the impact of Arizona's bioscience sector in by 2033. That means more jobs. That means more companies. That means more cures. And my company is part of the solution in helping us double by doing and then tell them what you do. Because it's the, the amorphous goal of we're going to double in 10 years doesn't become real to people until they hear how you are making it happen. So Dr. Monk is at the Biodesign Institute, and he would say, and our researchers are developing bio-inspired solutions to some of our world's greatest health challenges. Mayo Clinic can say, and we are developing the next generation of physicians, we are treating patients with state-of-the-art medical care, and oh, by the way, we are building the new Des Discovery Oasis right next door to Mayo Clinic, and there is nothing like it in the whole world. Did I get that right, Eric? <laughs> Those are just a few examples. But the reality is, is that this is not Easy Bio's goal. It's not my goal. It is our goal. Because we together can make this happen for the betterment of people in Arizona today and for generations to come. 
I have had the privilege of watching Arizona companies go from their earliest stages to now being deliver delivering products. And you know, one is Regenesis Medical, and, and Regenesis, I remember when they just had an idea, and today they have FDA approval for the Reprieve system, which helps people with diabetic neuropathy, which is a huge problem. And they have been focusing up to now on our veterans, and we owe them everything. And thanks to Regenesis, many of them are going to have a much better quality of life in the days to come. So Team Regenesis, thank you for what you're doing. But Regenesis is a 20-year overnight success story. It shouldn't take that long. And one of the reasons it does take that long is because we don't have enough capital in Arizona. And that is why we worked with the legislature and Senator Gowan and Senator Shope to create the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, Dylan. So let's put impact in perspective, okay? Arizona's health innovation sector, our hospitals, our drug companies, our medical device companies, our university research centers, employ over 345,000 Arizonans. Think about that. There's a lot of towns in Arizona that don't have 345,000 people in them. And we're talking about doubling in 10 years. Imagine the impact that that will make. Imagine how many of our kids won't have to move out of state and grandma won't have to get on the plane at Christmas time. <laughs> many of you know that I'm an economist. Economists look at economic impact, okay? The work that you're doing how does that impact? What does that generate? Is it a good return on investment? Arizona has invested over $27 billion over the last two decades to build up our bioscience sector. Look around this room, okay? The impact is there, but can you measure it? And the answer is yes. In 2021, which is the last year that we have data from the Biotechnology Innovation Organization in that corner, thank you, Bio, because um, I can't afford to have that study done by myself, um, Arizona generated $38.54 billion in economic impact in one year. 20, so think about compounding that year over year over year and we have a goal to double. When we double, you're talking about more jobs, more opportunities, more money, tax dollars for schools, more opportunities for people across Arizona, and hopefully more cures so that children don't grow up without parents, or parents don't see their children get married. So when we all work together on these big goals, it matters. And when we double that economic impact, that will take us to $77 billion a year. So when I sit down with Senator Shope and we start talking about, okay, how are we gonna get the money in to do the things we need? We're gonna be going right back to return on investment, right, Senator Kavanaugh? What's the return on investment? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, Dylan. So the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund was created by the Arizona legislature in 2022. Um, it was a long, difficult, challenging thing to structure because it's never been done in any state. But it has been done around the world. So we modeled the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund after an organization in the United Kingdom called the Wellcome Trust. The Wellcome Trust is the largest private healthcare philanthropy in the world. And in 1975, it had the equivalent of $200 million in it. 
Today, it has the equivalent of $50 billion in it because it was properly invested to do the right things, but more importantly, it has changed and saved lives all over the world. That is what we are building in Arizona. And that is why it is so important that we do the things that the Health Innovation Trust Fund requires us to do when it starts making distributions. And that is to support our future workforce, to develop our entrepreneurs, and to make the mission-related investments so that companies can get to proof of concept so that investors feel comfortable writing the checks <clears throat> that will take that discovery into development and move it towards becoming a treatment or cure. And so as we work together, I encourage all of you to get involved in working on this because we will all as a community need to work together with some very difficult times ahead. So with that, um, you know, how does that work happen? Well, the state doesn't do those things, right? The state is the manager of the funding. It then distributes that funding to the Opportunity Through Entrepreneurship Foundation and the program, which is called AZ Advances. And that is where we will do those three things. So to give you an idea, OTEF and AZ Advances since 2011 have had helped over 1,400 students with internships, scholarships, and making connections with industry. AZ Bio working with AZ Advances is supporting our entrepreneurs so that they know what they need to do to grow their companies. And I'll be in JP, at J.P. Morgan in San Francisco the first week in January meeting with entrepreneurs and, more importantly, with investors from all over the world, telling them what they need to do to get involved in Arizona. And then, last but not least, we need to make those mission-related investments so that the money that goes into these young companies keeps that investment in Arizona. And um, we announced during Arizona Bioscience Week our first three investments in small Arizona companies. Um, one is making a patch that can go on the human heart so people that have a hole in their heart don't need a heart transplant. That's pretty cool. One is dealing with a new, what we call monoclonal antibody, think biologic drug, for people that have ARDS. Now, you may not have heard of that, but you saw the impact of it during COVID because that is acute respiratory distress syndrome. And that is an innovation coming out of the University of Arizona, Senator Champ, um, that we hope will save lives. And they just dosed their first patient last week. Um, and then last but not least, Annuncia Medical is a company that makes a medical device, they're based in Scottsdale, to help people that have hydrocephalus, think fluid on the brain. Now, and hopefully everybody's done eating. So um, when you have too much fluid on your brain, it creates pressure. It creates pressure on the brain, it can hurt you, it can kill you. So there has to be a release valve. We call those release valves shunts. The problem is, is that they get clogged. And then you need another surgery. Well, this is brain. So every time they have to put in a new shunt, it's another brain surgery. It's not unusual for a child diagnosed with hydrocephalus to have more brain surgeries than birthdays before they turn 18. What Annunciate Medical has figured out how to do is create a little add-on device that is under the scalp that's kind of like a, a, a push button. And when you push the button, it goes and a little poof of air comes out. And it clears the clog. And then if you can clear the clog that way, you don't have to have another brain surgery. Those are amazing things. That's what we're working on here in Arizona. 
Now, the other thing is, is, you know, I'm always, I think they see me come into the legislature and they say, uh, she's going to ask for money again. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I am. But more importantly, I want to make sure that all of our elected leaders understand how we are also putting back into the community. So AZ Bio has a program called the Bio Business Solutions Program. All of these companies need to buy things, right, to make what they're making. So thanks to our partnership with Bio, we are able to get amazing discounts on the laboratory supplies, the consumables, the sh shipping, the tools that they need. And last year, we enabled Arizona companies to save over $4 million in one year. That's more money than the Arizona Commerce Authority gave out in grants for entrepreneurs. And we do that year after year after year. So we are part of the solution. We work to do the things that the state can't do. And we rely on our cities and our counties and our state to help us on the things that we can't do by ourselves. And that's why this partnership between our elected leaders and our business community is so important. Now, if you didn't get a pin on your way in, make sure you get a pin on the way out. I want to see you wearing your pins. Because when we do that, we combat the, the who knew effect, right? When people say, wow, I didn't know that was going on in Arizona. Well, if you're wearing the pin, you're going to tell them what's going on at your company. But more importantly, it will take all of us working together to achieve these goals. And your show of support, as simple as just putting on the pin, really does make a difference.